Jungles are often considered as just forest by many people who haven't experienced these dangerous places. Jungles are much bigger than you might think, especially the Amazon jungle, the home of many discoveries and many tribes. And while some people who get unfortunately stranded just want to survive, there are those who venture into jungles for adventures and exploration. Pyramids of Paratuari This is the most beautiful view I've ever seen, and it deserved to rank as number one on our list. These mountains look straight out of a Tolkien novel, leading to the elf civilization. But these are in fact real. The pyramids of Paratuari, nestled in the Andes Mountains in Peru, stand as enigmatic relics of an ancient civilization. These structures are shrouded in mystery, and they captivate the imaginations of everyone in the world. It is amazing to know that even ancient civilizations had architectural knowledge even without using any modern tools or machinery, and these pyramids are the proof. If you come closer, many mysteries lie within the hidden chambers and passages, forgotten by time. This site is an ode to how quickly time might pass and that we must do something to be remembered for. I would love to come visit these pyramids, but many are afraid because of the old scary stories about them. Sistine Chapel of the Ancients In 2019, a team of scientists have discovered ancient art on rock cliffs deep in the Amazon forest. It was named the Sistine Chapel of the Ancients. These drawings are more than 12,000 years old, and they were made by ancient people during the Ice Age. The age of the art was mostly estimated because animals that are now extinct, such as giant sloths, Ice Age horses, and mastodons are on there. The drawings show their everyday life, struggles, and even some rituals that are yet to be explained. These pictures show us the first known civilization living in this area moved and who or what they worshipped. It is still unknown how they climbed the cliffs and what inspired them to make those hand paintings. An 8 mile long canvas of Ice Age beasts. Images of giant sloths, mastodons, and other extinct animals have been discovered in the Amazon. These images might cover nearly 8 miles of rock above three caves in Colombia. An archaeologist at the University of Exeter, Mark Robinson, and some Colombian scientists conducted thorough research on the rocks. They found out that these fantastic drawings were made by the first people to live in western Amazonia. It is more like documentation of how they looked during their existence in the Ice Ages. People who lived in a nearby archaeological site called Serrana La Lindosa may have started painting around 12,600 to 11,800 years ago. The researchers claim that there's already a lot of Ice Age animal rock art in central Brazil. However, the new findings are more detailed and give a better idea of what these now extinct animals look like. Green Anaconda It doesn't matter if you love them or hate them. Chances are, you are at least a tad bit scared of snakes. And I wish I could say that I'm here to ease that fear, but no, I'm not. Meet the green anaconda, an indigene of the Amazon rainforest. This guy is the largest snake in the entire world. This mammoth can grow anywhere from 20 to 30 feet long and weigh 500 pounds. While some snakes, like the reticulated python, may get slightly longer, the green anaconda clinches the title with its sheer mass. What's even scarier is that this snake is not one of those gentle giants. Anacondas hunt by squeezing the life out of and swallowing their prey. Now that's a terrible way to go. Luckily, they live mainly in the Amazon rainforest, so we don't have to worry about them coming out on your evening walk. The tallest tree in the Amazon. Check out the tallest tree in the Amazon jungle, Angelum vermilio, also known by its scientific name, Denisia excelsa, measuring a whopping 290 feet tall and 32 feet wide, so pretty much the size of a 25 story building. Can you believe it? It's located in the Aratapuru River Nature Reserve in northern Brazil. The colossal tree was first spotted through satellite images in 2019 as part of a 3D mapping project. But as you can imagine, that wasn't enough for the researchers who traveled 155 miles by boat up rivers with treacherous rapids, plus another 12 miles on foot across mountainous jungle terrain to reach the elusive tree. Now that's true devotion. Heck, one member of the expedition was even bitten by a venomous spider along the way. When they finally reached the tree, they were left speechless. They couldn't believe how big it really is. After the initial shock, they set camp around the tree and got to work. They'll now carefully analyze it in an attempt to answer some questions, such as why the region has so many giant trees and how much carbon they store, and of course, how old the tree is. According to initial estimates, the tree is at least 400 to 600 years old. First ever underwater images of the Amazon Reef 
Here is the first peek into the underwater life of the Amazon Reef. These images were captured by a submarine that was launched by the Greenpeace ship MY Esperanza as part of the Defend the Amazon Reef campaign. I mean look at those colors. These photos seem unreal, like professional drawings for a comic book. The photographs of the recently discovered coral reef system shows colorful fish and other beings that I couldn't name without the help of Google. This area was open for oil exploration by the Brazilian government. Scientists and locals are trying to stop it because it has the potential for discovering lost species and maybe even new ones as well as it is the area where local fishermen make their living. The microbiological system here is unique and can't be found in any other place in the world. Spider decoys. Did you know that some spiders are prop makers? Strange but true. It is one of the most shocking discoveries on the Amazon rainforest. Many scientists have come back from the United States to study this spider. They are curious about how it builds spider-shaped decoys in its web from insect carcasses and jungle trash. The scientists don't know if the decoys are used as lures for prey or as anti-predator defense systems. On the island of Negros in the Philippines, a second decoy spider builds fake spiders that look like the real thing. That spider decoy has legs spread out in all directions from its body, while the Peruvian decoy has proportions that tend to point down. Now here's the thing. The Philippine and Peruvian species make these decoys, but the architecture is different and they are 11,000 miles apart. Mysterious Geoliths You know those odd carvings seen around the world that are usually only visible from high up in the sky? You know, the Nazca Lines in Peru and the Uffington White Horse in England? Well, those are examples of what scientists call geoglyphs. Geoglyphs are weird designs that are usually hard to detect from the ground. Nobody knows where the designs came from or what they even mean, but some think aliens put them there. It turns out the rainforest is loaded with hundreds of them, 300 of them actually. While these geoglyphs are enormous, with many being as wide as 36 feet, they're still nearly impossible to notice at ground level. It took flying over for scientists to even understand their extent. You'd probably never know if you were standing in the middle of one. As for why they are there, scientists don't know for sure, but they think it may have something to do with some ancient civilizations. Mangroves growing in water with little to no salinity. While on an expedition in the Amazon River Delta, in April 2022, National Geographic explorers Angelo Bernardino and Thiago Silva spotted something that had never been documented before in deltas anywhere else in the world. They found mangroves growing in water with little to no salinity and overlapping with freshwater forested wetlands, a discovery which left them speechless. If you're wondering why this discovery is so fascinating, well, it's simply because mangroves are hardy trees and shrubs that have adapted to live primarily in saltwater in the changing intertidal zones along marine coasts. And as mentioned previously, they have never been found in water with little or no salinity until this discovery. This fascinating find increases the known area of mangroves in the region by as much as 20% or an additional 70 square miles. According to Angelo, this find will give further insight into the intricacies of mangrove forests and how they're crucial to the nearby communities. Angelo and Tiago also explored 11 mangrove forests in the area and used 3D laser scanning from drones and the ground while doing so. Most Powerful Electric Eel Scientists have found three new species of electric eel, and one of them can deliver electric shocks greater than any other known animal. They've named it the Electrophorus volti. Shocking, right? And it lives in shallow waters of the Amazon forest. It can produce up to 860 volts of electricity, which helps it catch prey and more importantly, defend itself. Mathematically, it is not fatal to humans. But I wouldn't advise you to test that theory. A lot of fish species generate electricity, but only electric eels use it for hunting and self-defense. It was previously thought that all electric eels belong to the same species, but this finding shows that they have different lengths, skull structures, and feeding patterns. A boiling river. Andres Russo, a Peruvian geoscientist, heard about it from his grandfather. He decided to carry out research on the boiling river called Chene Tempishka, meaning boiled with the heat of the sun. In 2011, Rousseau took a trip down the Amazon in the company of his aunt to discover the boiling river. A thermometer showed that the temperature of the water at the time was 187 degrees Fahrenheit. This indicates that touching it will only take a few seconds to inflict a third degree burn. The boiling river is 82 feet wide and 19.6 feet deep. 
and it runs for 3.8 miles. This level of heat in the water comes from hot water inside the earth, which travels through cracks and gathers up to form a river. It's strange because the river starts out as a cool stream. It heats up, then cools down a little bit at night. According to locals, the Boiling River is a powerful place in the supernatural world. Although researchers say it has something to do with science, which do you think it is? Japuticaba As we already established, the Amazon is filled with bizarre wonders. From terrifying reptiles to trees that look utterly alien, this tree may not look as monstrous as the 20-foot tall snakes, but it's certainly strange. At first glance, the Japuticaba looks downright sickly with the several large dark lumps that grow along the bark of the tree. If you didn't know any better, you'd think that these were tree tumors and may be a little disgusted. But luckily, these lumps aren't bad things. In fact, on the contrary, they're super fruits. I say super fruits because while most other trees grow fruits, none of them cover their entire trunk with them like a full body tattoo the way Japuticaba does. But while the tree design looks like an artistic choice, scientists believe there may be an evolutionary reason for its appearance. It turned out that the Japuticaba evolved to feed animals who couldn't climb trees. Proof is settlement. Scientists have long assumed that the Amazon River Basin wasn't densely populated until the arrival of Spanish colonizers near the end of the 15th century. They assume this because of the fact that the surrounding land experiences frequent severe flooding during rainy seasons, which makes permanent settlement without the help of modern day technology pretty much impossible. But then something happened that made the scientists change their minds forever. An archaeologist from the University of Bonn, Heiko Prumers, and Carla James Benincourt a student at the time went on a mission to explore two mounds located near the village of Kasarabi in northern Bolivia. The mounds turned out to be eroded pyramid stumps and platform buildings, which to them was clear evidence of a settlement. These mounds weren't just unoccupied ceremonial sites, no. Instead, they were used during the entire year, even during rainy season, by a community that farmed, fished, and hunted for food. These people were a part of a so-called Kasarabi culture and they could be found in northern Bolivia during the late Holocene Epoch. They protected themselves from the Amazon basin by using water control systems. Aside from mounds, they also dug canals, ditches, and causeways. After discovering these mounds, the two researchers decided to try create a map of the Kasarabi culture using light detection and ranging technology, also known as LIDAR. These scans mapped out a total of 26 Kasarabi settlements two of which were significantly larger than the rest. These two settlements probably acted as economic and cultural centers. Man of the Hole This was the Man of the Hole, the last known remaining member of the indigenous Awa people. The Awa tribe was the world's most threatening tribe because of modern machinery and loggers who ruined the forest so they had to draw further and further back into the jungle each year. This man lived in isolation for over 26 years as most members of his tribe were wiped out in the 1970s, and the rest were forced to move because of deforestation. He is known as the man of the hole because he dug deep holes and put spikes on the edges in order to catch animals. Interestingly, he also had holes for protection in the structures he lived in. There is no evidence of how he remained alone or if he has ever had contact with neighboring tribes. Glass Frogs there are only a few things more unsettling than seeing the insides of an animal's body. That's why dissecting frogs is one of the hardest parts of high school. But what if I told you that some frogs don't need you to cut into them before showing you their insides? This strange frog species that live in the Amazon rainforest has transparent skin around its abdominal area. If you look at one, you can see everything from its heart, lungs, guts, intestines, liver, and even arteries. These little hoppers are walking, breathing biology lessons, but very little is known about them. Scientists aren't exactly sure how they evolved to have transparent skin, and if there's an advantage to it. What we know is that the native people love the glass frogs so much that Colombia put one on the back of their 500 peso coin. A chocolate frog. This little fellow right here looks as if it came straight out of a candy shop. Scientists must have been really confused when they found it. It's like finding a piece of chocolate in an Amazon jungle. Although this frog is known to locals, it hadn't been described by science. Anyway, this incredibly cute frog was found by researchers in the Peruvian Amazon. They nicknamed it the tapir frog because its snout resembles that of a tapir. The tapir frog was found in the Amazon peatlands, boggy wetland thick with decaying plants, one of the rarest habitats in the Amazon rainforest. The interesting thing about these peatlands is that they store almost 10 times the amount of carbon due to them being relatively undisturbed. 
two brothers found alive in the Amazon rainforest. After three weeks of being lost in the Amazon rainforest, brothers Glacon and Glauco, ages 7 and 9, were found by a local lumberjack. The two children went missing on February 18th while visiting the Lago Capana Nature Reserve and the authorities collected a large search party of 260 people, but it was called off after only 8 days. The man cutting wood noticed them between some trees and contacted the hospital immediately. They were unhurt but severely malnourished and dehydrated because they survived only on rainwater and berry species they knew were safe to consume. These kids belong to an indigenous tribe that has a culture of introducing children to the forest and hunting from an early age, which is the main reason they survived that long. The Strange Visitors We found this viral video clip on the internet of some pictures taken by two British tourists while they were visiting the Amazon rainforest. Later that day, they thought it wise to recall memories when they found something shocking. It was a fantastic shot of some local children standing in front of the woods. But this is not about the children, but rather what was behind them in plain sight. They spotted a ghostly looking creature that looked like an alien standing close by the trees. That's not all. There was a glimpse of something that looked like a light shining right next to it. This paranormal experience was quite shocking as it was the last thing they expected to find in the Amazon rainforest. Goliath Bird Eater when scientists thought bird eater spiders couldn't get any bigger, the Amazon forest proves that things can always get stranger. In 2014, Guyanese resident Piotr Nasrecki was taking a walk in the forest when he heard rustling. When he turned on his flashlight, he saw something that looked like a small mammal and thought it was a possum or a giant ant. However, moments later, he realized what he saw was a puppy-sized spider. Nazarecki reported that the spider's leg span was about a foot, with a body size of a giant fish. These guys are not just big though, they are incredibly dangerous. Since they can't chew solid food, they stab their prey and fill it with toxins that paralyze and liquefy its insides. Luckily, Goliath bird eater toxins are mostly harmless to humans. Silk Henges In 2013, a graduate student by the name of Troy Alexander took some photos of a mysterious structure in the Amazon rainforest in Peru with an odd fence and a small tower in the center. The photos instantly went viral, but the structure left scientists perplexed as they couldn't quite pinpoint what it really is. There were different theories though, including slime mold, fungus, lace wings, some even thought it was a hoax. Turns out, it was none of those things. The structure was created by a spider and researchers found about 45 of them, and they named them Silk Henges. A team of researchers, led by entomologist Phil Torres, also discovered baby spiders hatching out of them. But it wasn't until a few years later that you could actually see these adorable spiderlings emerging from their picket fence nursery in a stunning video taken in the Yasuni National Park in Ecuador. Vast Network of Villages Archaeology isn't only digging out bones and brushing them. A team using laser technology and satellites found more than 35 villages dating from 1300 to 1700 AD. These are the remains of mound villages which were shaped like circles or rectangles and connected by road networks for easier trading. The villages form a sun-like formation with roads coming from the middle to outer ones as rays, which indicates that there was a specific model of their communal organization. The circular villages were larger, with two or more roads connecting them to others, while rectangular ones were smaller, towards the end of the chain, or just connecting bigger villages. And for the conspiracy theorists in you, some scientists even suggest that the village formations indicated the lay of the universe. The Basilisk Lizard In the Iguana family, green basilisks are about 2 feet long with their long whip-like tail. Green basilisks are omnivores, which means they eat plants and small animals like insects. The species is nicknamed the Jesus Christ lizard because it was seen doing what no other lizard could. It could run or walk on water. Now that's incredible! Their rear feet have long toes with fringes of skin that spread out in the water, giving them more surface area. While moving their legs, they slap their splayed feet hard against the water, making a small air pocket that keeps them from sinking as long as they're on the move. They spend most of their time in the trees and are never far from a body of water. They hunt by jumping from a tree into the water and running across the surface at 5 feet per second. Although the water walking skills can only move it along the surface for at least 15 feet or more. Hundreds of Villages With many of these strange discoveries, it might seem the Amazon jungle is an impossible place to live. 
but scientists have proved that the forest was once home to several thriving communities and millions of people. These days, what's left makes it look like these areas have never been touched. But according to a team of archaeologists from the University of Exeter, these areas used to be packed. In 2018, they discovered several remote villages in the rainforest. They also found evidence of fortifications among the ruins, which suggests that an invading force may have wiped out the villagers. Although scientists have only found 81 of these villages, they believe that there are hundreds more. The discovery gives credibility to the idea that the Amazon was densely populated even before Europeans arrived. Huge Anaconda Good thing he spotted this monstrosity from above. I couldn't begin to imagine what would happen if this snake spotted anyone. A helicopter pilot surveying the Amazon River found a massive snake swimming and contacted the authorities who formed a team to capture it. Why would anyone accept to go on a mission to be eaten by this? There are a lot of videos of anacondas in that area, and people believe they're fake, and some are, but when they captured this 50 feet, 1,100 pound monster, albeit its belly being full contributed to its weight, it was proof that there are some giant specimens in and around the river. Giant Ground Sloth Giant ground sloths look nothing like the sloths we know today, and that's a good thing. These extinct sloth species lived in the Americas during the Ice Age, and they were huge. The largest sloth to walk the Earth, Megalonyx jeffersoni, could grow up to 10 feet long and weigh up to 2,000 pounds. For years, scientists believed the species was extinct, but recent reports suggest that that may not be the case. Several people who live close to the Amazon report seeing a strange creature called the Mapinguari in the Amazon. Legend says his creature is very hairy and has giant claws and feet facing backwards, but its most defining feature is the horrific stench that follows it. While some may have called the Mapingari the Amazon Bigfoot, locals suggest another explanation. They believe the sloths didn't die out, and the Mapingari may be one of the remaining species of ground sloth that still lives hidden deep in the Amazon. Mysterious Plant when one scientist stumbled upon this strange tree all the way back in 1973 in the Amazon rainforest, he was stunned because the tree was unlike anything he had seen before and he had seen a lot given the fact that he was a scientist and all. The mysterious tree was approximately 20 feet tall, a tiny orange fruit shape like paper lantern. So he did what any scientist would do and took some samples of the plant's leaves and fruits. He then showed the samples to his colleagues who were left speechless. Turns out they weren't able to identify the plant as a species. Heck, they couldn't even declare it a new species because they couldn't tell what family it belonged to. It wasn't until long after that that the scientists analyzed the plant's DNA and that revealed that the mystery plant's closest relatives were in the Picromniaceae family. As for the mystery plant itself, the researchers gave it a formal scientific name Enigmanu alvarezia. The genus name Enigmanu means mystery of Manu, with Manu being the national park in Peru where the plant was found. The species name on the other hand is in honor of Patricia Alvarez Loesia who collected the first fresh specimens used for the genetic analysis. Some of the oldest human burials in the Amazon Isla del Tesoro or Treasure Island is an island in the Bolivian Amazon. It is not filled with gold and pirate halls, but rather hides an intellectual treasure. Archaeologists have found the oldest human burial sites on Treasure Island dating back as early as 10,000 years ago. This has proved that humans have created hunter-gatherer settlements in this part of the world much earlier than previously predicted. This isn't a real island, it is a landlocked mound in the area of a rainforest surrounded by water. It was the safest place that predators couldn't reach and it was protected from seasonal floods. In the center, there is an ancient garbage dump filled with animal remains and charcoal. Next to that, there are remains of people. Also, there was evidence of primitive farm fields and ditches that indicates that farming developed in several places around the world in a similar time frame. A massive reef. A reef was recently discovered around the mouth of the Amazon River in the Atlantic Ocean. It's pretty massive, with a depth of 164 to 328 feet, covering about 10,000 square miles. A lot different from the others because it was found in muddy water. We believe that's why it wasn't found earlier. Researchers from Rio de Janeiro, who surveyed where the river meets the Atlantic Ocean, discovered that the biodiversity of the Amazon reef was not as rich as that of other tropical reefs. So far, they have already found a lot of species, including more than 70 species of fish and crustaceans. For one thing, the reef which was tagged as the treasure of the rainforest may be in danger due to ocean acidification and ocean warming as well as offshore oil exploration. A Lost City 
In 2010, Brazilian anthropologists studying the Amazon found a bunch of squares, circles, and other shapes in the upper Amazon basin. Once shrouded by dense forest, the man-made formations point toward the existence of a previously unknown civilization, and scientists believe it could be the lost city of El Dorado. For centuries, the legend of El Dorado has drawn legions of explorers and adventurers. Described as an ancient empire of citadels and treasure hidden deep in the Amazon jungle, many people trooped into the jungle hoping to find the city and all its treasures. However, none of these trips ended well, prompting many people to believe that the whole thing was a hoax. Many 20th century scholars also called the Amazon too inhospitable to sustain settlements. However, this discovery proves that the lost city of Z may have indeed existed. While scientists have already found a bunch of relics, with the oldest traced back to 200 AD, they believe there may be more hidden under the shrubs. Short-Eared Dog Now it's time to talk about one of the Amazon's most mysterious residents, the short-eared dog, also known by its scientific name of Atalicinus microtus. The species was first described all the way back in 1883, but scientists spent well over a century largely in the dark about the animal. The short-eared dog seemed almost like a myth. It wasn't until Renata Light Pittman, researcher and veterinarian embarked on a long-term study with the help of a semi-wild short-eared dog named Oso. At the beginning of the study, Renata was stunned by the sheer amount of mismatching information about this ghost-like animal that was totally unheard of outside of the Amazon and even little known by the locals there. Renata found out a lot of interesting things about the animal. For one, the dog prefers meat when it can get it, but is actually a major fruit eater. It also has a great role in the ecosystem of the Amazon by dispersing the seeds of many key plants. Another curious thing about this dog is that it largely depends on a giant armadillo for its burrows which the short-eared dog squats in once the armadillo has done the hard work of digging them out. Predatory Glowworms Bioluminescence is the production and emission of light by living organisms. It is mostly tied to underwater creatures, some plants, and fireflies. Wildlife photographer Jeff Kremer formed a team with entomologists from the University of Florida to investigate bioluminescent larvae potentially discovered in Peru. These are click beetle larvae. While they're not fully investigated yet, we do know that they can turn the bioluminescence on and off at will. These larvae are predatory, they use the glow to attract prey and pull it deep into the ground. The glow occurs only at their heads and they turn it off and retract in their tunnels if threatened. Thank god they're small. This is some deeply disturbing horror movie material. A walking tree. We have heard that Amazon is home to the weirdest animals, but did you ever imagine that strange trees exist there too? How weird. We are talking about a walking tree. I bet you didn't see that coming. A species of palm tree that grows as much as 80 feet in height has been seen around the Amazon moving from its growing spot. This tree goes by the botanical name Socratea exorisa. The roots are quite different from other trees. In its case, it has a stilt-like root pattern suspended from the ground. The tree moves from one location to another with these tilted roots. However, it happens slowly. No one has proven why this tree doesn't remain in one spot. The Rainforest Deforestation Uncontacted Tribes of Valle do Havari The only thing more shocking than finding a lost city is finding lost people. Technically, I'm not sure if we can call them lost since they didn't want to be found. Occupying a 40,000 square mile area, a vast tract of land larger than modern day Austria, Vale do Havari is one of Brazil's largest indigenous territories. Located in the western region of the Amazon, the area is home to over 3,000 indigenous individuals. These people who make up roughly 14 tribes are uncontacted, meaning they've lived all their lives without communication with the outside world. They occupy at least 19 villages, which researchers identified by flying overhead, as the Brazilian government made it illegal for non-indigenous people to enter the territory. Balbina Dam Balbina Dam was completed in 1987 and it flooded the forest, making lots of small islands, 3,546 to be exact. This is just a small part of the island complex. It looks mesmerizing and beautiful, but does it damage the flora and fauna in the area? What do you think? Do dams in the Amazon River ruin the animals and the forests? Do they help them by making isolated habitats? Do you know any more places in the world that were flooded like this? Let us know in the comments down below. The Rainforest Deforestation from 2001 to 2020, Mato Grosso lost 12.1 mega hectares of tree cover. That's a 21% drop in tree cover since 2000. 
And this is what you are seeing. This is just a tiny fraction of what deforestation in the Amazon rainforest looks like. The brown patch is the deforested land and right next to it, the lush green parts, still untouched. Unfortunately, an estimated 50,000 species are wiped out of the Amazon rainforest every year when the trees are cut down. In the past, subsistence farming has been a significant cause of deforestation in the Amazon, but recently, cattle ranching has been the main reason. Since the 1970s, large-scale cattle ranching has been blamed for deforestation in Brazil. Carbon emission in the rainforest is highly destructive. If this continues, there will be no forest left at all in as little as 40 years from now. Unfortunately, global warming control might pose a significant challenge if the rainforest is destroyed. Newly observed tribe The term uncontacted can be a little misleading because it suggests that an indigenous tribe has never interacted with the outside world. But this is hardly the case as most so-called uncontacted tribes, even those from Vale do Havari, have at some point encountered some humans other than their tribe members. That said, there are a handful of societies that have never come in contact with humans outside their tribe. One of such communities was captured on camera deep in the Amazon jungle in 2017. This footage shows a clearing in the forest with a handful of figures walking through, oblivious to the camera. For thousands of years, these people have lived their lives without knowing that there was life outside their camp. Although we do not know what they call themselves, scientists are keeping a watchful eye on them to study how they live. Do you think this tribe will ever realize they have neighbors? Or will they remain in their own world forever? Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section.